This episode is brought to you by the One Love Foundation. Many stories on true crime podcasts start with abusive relationships. The numbers of people affected by relationship abuse are startling. Over one in three women, nearly one in three men, and over one in two trans non-binary people will be in an abusive relationship in their lifetimes. Abusive relationships rarely start with physical abuse. Instead, there are often red flags like manipulation, isolation, belittling, and volatility. Not all unhealthy relationships become abusive, but all abusive relationships start out as unhealthy ones. One Love Foundation, a national nonprofit dedicated to ending relationship abuse and creating a world of healthier relationships, wants to empower you to see the signs of an unhealthy relationship before things go too far. Go to joinonelove.org to see the signs and know how to help a friend who may be in an unhealthy relationship. That's joinonelove.org and learn how to spot the signs of unhealthy and healthy relationship behaviors. This episode is brought to you by Drizzly. Culture, society. On every street and around every bend lies a world positively overflowing with both. But sometimes we can all use a night in. Remove from the endless spiral of chaos and absolute nonsense that waits outside our doors. And for those nights, there's Drizzly, the number one app for alcohol delivery. With Drizzly, you can shop local stores and compare prices on the biggest selection of beer, wine, and spirits. Then get your favorite drinks delivered to your door in under 60 minutes, all from the comfort of your couch. Because society is great, but it doesn't have your couch, and it's windy out. And you forgot your jacket. And oh my God, look at that line to that place. Are you serious? <sighs> so download the Drizzly app or go to drizzly.com. That's D R I Z L Y.com today. The Dateable Podcast is an insider's look into modern dating that the Huffington Post calls one of the top 10 podcasts about love and sex. On each episode, we'll talk to real daters about everything from sex parties to sex droughts, date fails to diaper fetishes, and first moves to first loves. I'm your host, Yue Xu, former dating coach turned dating sociologist. you also hear from my co-host and producer, Julie Kraftchik, as we explore this crazy dateable world. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Dateable Podcast. Welcome to our off season. We're still chilling here on our off season, <laughs> but we are about to be back for season 16. Oh, yes, we are. Can't be more excited. So that's coming next week. Get ready. But for now, we are still continuing the off season. And, you know, we are a week out from Valentine's Day. Mm. I feel like people have a very love-hate relationship with this holiday. Yep. I know I did for years. So I was curious what people thought. But before I go into it, we did a poll in the Facebook group to hear people's thoughts on Valentine's Day. Yue, what's your sentiment of the holiday? I don't know anybody who loves it. I only know people who hates the holiday. I don't celebrate it. We acknowledge it. Mm -hmm. My partner and I go to dinner a few days before, a few days after. But on the day of, it's not like, oh, my God, it's Valentine's Day. It's not on my calendar by any means. What about you? I have a love-hate relationship. I think I fall into that camp. Like, there were times that it would make me very depressed, especially if I was not in a relationship or I just recently ended one. Yeah. I remember there was a period with my, I don't know, if maybe it was coincidentally because of Valentine's Day or just the timing. But I feel mm -hmm. like there was a period that, like, every relationship I had, had ended in January, only a few mm. weeks before Valentine's Day. So be still be fresh. And it was just a reminder. So for that reason, I really did not like it. Mm. That being said, last year, when I was in a relationship, that was our first Valentine's Day together. I think for me, there was like a little bit of pressure on it because I had kind of given it this other side of pressure, right? Of feeling oh. like down that I'm like, I don't want to be disappointed was kind of what I was feeling. It wasn't that I needed like to be all out but I didn't want to be disappointed by the holiday. It's something that is marked on my calendar just because it's on everyone's calendar. But it's just a reminder every year, I think. So what did you guys end up doing last year? It actually worked out really well. We wanted to go to the hot springs anyways. Mm -hmm. And we ended up going on Super Bowl Sunday because that's when it was like really inexpensive. But that was like <laughs> right before Valentine's Day. It's a good value. And we went from the Sunday into the Monday, which was Valentine's Day. So it worked out really well in the sense that we actually, you know how things are usually jacked up on Valentine's Day. Like yes. restaurants are extremely high. So, so when you said like we either go out a few days before or after, I'm like, yep, I get it. 
because they just kill you on it. I know. So we did that and we did a dinner too. It wasn't like for Valentine's Day, but it was kind of before. And of course, we got totally taken advantage of. Like the normal mm. preset price of that place of was probably like 50 to $60 cheaper than what we ended up paying on Valentine's right of course but were you happy with what oh you i was totally did? happy Good. and i think like i made a joke on this podcast that i wanted a chocolate rose do you remember i was saying that oh, yes. i really wanted chocolate roses yeah and my partner came through he gave me a lot of chocolate roses so yes i was very happy but i think like now that i'm two years into a relationship I don't care as much. I feel like my caring went yeah. down significantly. I was going to say, I think Valentine's Day was more exciting when you're in a newer relationship. It's kind of like a test. Is this person going to step it up? I'm not saying it's a good thing, uh, but I do hard, think there is yes. a little bit of that. Like, are they going to do a good job? That's a challenging word. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> but I'm... it is a way to also just like be romantic and show that you're serious about each other. It is a test in a way of like, how are we celebrating the extent of the celebration? That's been my source of anxiety for many years yeah. with new relationships. It's all about the timing. The reason why we don't celebrate Valentine's Day as much is because the back-to-back -back holidays, it goes from yeah. the December holidays to New Year's, and then it's my birthday right away, <laughs> and then it's Chinese New Year's, and then it's Valentine's Day. It's just like back-to-back. -back. All those other holidays seem to be a much bigger deal than Valentine's Day for me. Yeah. It's just like back to back. So we just don't really prioritize. Yeah. By the time of Valentine's Day, it's like we're done. We're done celebrating. Yeah. And no, I could see that. I think like when you're in a newer relationship too, or you're in that in-between stage, and that's where I think maybe it's more of a test. I do hate using the word test, but I also feel like it kind of is what Valentine's Day is. It's a artificially created holiday that yeah. people hold this like weight that really shouldn't be there. But because it's a Hallmark holiday, because it's so overhyped in media, I do think that pressure comes with it. Mm -hmm. So I feel like when I've been the most obsessed with it is when I'm kind of like in the middle of like, I'm not yes. sure where my yes, where something's really going. So it's almost like yes. a sign. Is this person gonna are they committed because of Valentine's Day when it like saying that out loud now? It's so ridiculous. I think it should be renamed DTR Day. Yeah, because it really is a defining holiday. If you're spending Valentine's Day together. Yeah, you're in a relationship. Definitely. <laughs> so I was curious what the sentiment was because because, mm -hmm. you know, everyone feels so strongly in some direction on this holiday. Mm -hmm. So we did a Facebook poll in our group, Love in the Time of Corona, as we like to do. So it was actually pretty split, 15% and 16%. 15% said, love it. Great way to show love, whether I have a partner or not. 16% hate it. It's a dumb Hallmark holiday. Okay. What's interesting is most of the people fell into don't hate it, don't love it, indifferent. That was 34%. Or like it only when I have a partner to celebrate with was 26%. People also mm. added two options that probably didn't get enough votes just because they were added later. But I like the red and pink themed chocolate ensuing sale on said chocolate. And then the other one was prefer to shower my close friends with love for Galentine's Day. Yeah, great. That sounds about right. I think people are definitely pretty split. And it just depends on how you want to view the holiday. Mm -hmm. If you want to make a big deal out of it, you make a big deal out of it. If you don't, you don't. You choose to celebrate however you want. I do think if you are in a partnership, though, or just are dating someone, it's so important to communicate what the holiday yeah. means to you instead of testing, hoping and <laughs> testing that they're going to do this one thing, like show up with chocolate hearts for you when right. you haven't communicated that. That is definitely a way to be disappointed, right? If you just yeah. have these expectations. And I think what I would say from my past that I would maybe caution people on is holding so much weight to it mm. that it gets you down. I remember like groups of girlfriends being like, let's go out, let's hit the town, you know, and like that felt too much to me also. <laughs> I guess everyone needs to kind of figure out what's right for them. But I think like for me by the end, I just kind of like pretended like it didn't exist, especially when it was on like a Tuesday. It's really easy to pretend it doesn't it's exist. It's the best when it's on a Tuesday. Yeah. yeah. It's hard when it's like a you Friday know? or a Saturday. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. This year it is midweek. No 
no one cares. It's a day that you probably wouldn't be doing anything anyways. If you're single, if it's getting you down, just like have the night like you normally would and just pretend it doesn't happen. That's a good point. I remember what is the timing of Valentine's Day this year? I would look every January to just figure it out just so I know if I would be disappointed or not. There was one year that Valentine's Day was the same day as Lunar New Year. So I was like, yes, I get to like celebrate Lunar New Year. There was another year that was exact same day as the Super Bowl. So I went to a Super Bowl party. I'm like, great, we can forget about Valentine's Day. But those years when it's just a silo holiday on like Friday, on Friday, night. Friday yeah. yeah. Even though I didn't give a shit, I gave a shit. Yeah. Of course I gave a shit. So one year I did a sleepover party with my girlfriends. That's fun. Like a lot of them were actually in relationships. I think I might have been like the only single one of the group, (laughs) but they were just like, oh, this will be more fun, you know? So I think like people swing different ways. We had one person in our Facebook group, Sarah, write, I'm a big fan of Valentine's Day. I am for some reason rarely seeing someone on Valentine's Day. So I use it as a day to hang out with my ladies. Nice. And then we had Jackie write, yes, I love sending Starbucks e-gift cards to my single girlfriends and going out to dinner. Day about love and appreciation for our platonic girlfriends, too. How beautiful is that? It is really nice. Yes. Yeah. Again, it's what you make of it. If I could go back in time, I would probably change my mentality about it and not hold the romantic weight that I did. Well, it's hard to get out of that because you're going to watch it on the news. It's everywhere around Valentine's Day. It's everywhere starting Christmas. I feel like they cleared out the the Christmas candy. You go into Walgreens or any pharmacy, it's like a drugstore. Yeah. It's ridiculous. So it's hard to tune it out and hard to be like, I don't care about the holiday because it seems like the rest of the world does care about the holiday. I do remember one year I was in a relationship, though, but I think it's because I I was in a relationship. I didn't care about the romantic side of it. I gave all my neighbors Valentine's cards because I missed yeah. that. And this is actually related to our conversation today. It's like gifting. What do you do? What do you give? What yeah. do you gift? And I gave everybody a handwritten Valentine's Day card with some candy because I missed that from school. So I thought that was actually kind of a cute thing I did. I was proud of myself. I really like it. I think starting maybe like when you're single. I mean, you could do this at any stage. Like you said, you were in a relationship when you did it. But I do think if I could go back to my old self instead of wallowing in my misery on Valentine's Day, I do think this idea of giving love to other people, like the Starbucks Mm -hmm. gift card idea that was posted in our Facebook group or Valentine's Day cards to your neighbors, like something where you're giving. I know for me, like anytime I give, it always makes me feel better. Yeah. And I think that is a way to invite that karma of love into your life if you're putting it out there. Then we might as well talk about giving. Yeah. Gifting and giving on Valentine's Day at every stage in dating. Let's start with early dating. Maybe you've just been seeing each other for a few weeks, less than a month. Less than a month. This is like the trickiest, trickiest timing. Are you defined or undefined? Undefined, but you're spending a lot of time together. You do like this person. Yeah. You haven't discussed Valentine's Day. I think candy, like a box of chocolates that's what, $3.99 or a card would be good for this because you're acknowledging it. You're not going so above and beyond that if they don't give you something that you're going to be terribly hurt and the expectation of it. I think like if you give a huge gift and you've never Mm. discussed it, it could get really awkward if they were like, oh, I didn't know we were doing gifts, right? Right. So I think it's either like you have the conversation or if you don't feel like you're ready to have the conversation, some like token of sentiment I think is a good approach. First of all, I think it's like four ninety nine now with inflation. So <laughs> yes, <laughs> let's level set there. But okay, so you have the gift, box of candy and a card. Are you yeah. giving it to this person in person? I feel like if you're not seeing them in person, then you probably could just send them a text, right? Yeah. <laughs> like I feel like actually, even if it's like the day Before and after, you don't need to like get something. I feel like if you're seeing them on the day and you don't know if you're doing like gifts, this is a good call. If you have no plan set up or they're outside of the realm of Valentine's Day, I feel like a text is sufficient. Yeah, sometimes just acknowledgement is all you really need. Happy Valentine's Day. 
thinking of you. Yeah. That's all good. I do remember I really enjoyed this gift. I had just been dating this guy for maybe three weeks. We were undefined. We had dinner the day before Valentine's Day, and he said, I got you a, a little gift. He didn't say it was a Valentine's Day gift, but I got you a little gift. And it was an inside joke we had. That's cute. I like that. If it's personalized, really cute. too. Yeah. I really enjoyed that. It was not a grand gesture. I did not need a grand gesture, but it meant a lot to me. Yeah, that's the key is like something that can be meaningful, but also not give pressure. You probably weren't like, oh, shit, I didn't get this person something. Yes. It was more of just like, oh, that's cute. Like, that's really sweet that they did that. Yes. You know, so maybe that's a good mindset to have. If you're in early dating stages, you give without the expectation to receive. Definitely. Good. Any other good ones around that time? I think like a nice handwritten card is sweet too. Well, yeah. I think like when I say card, it doesn't need to be like something super cheesy. I even like at the beginning stage, it, or maybe not, we had like defined the relationship, but I would just like give cards randomly to my partner and he like really liked it because it felt like very yeah. like heartfelt, you know, like very personalized. I think personalized is key. So early dating, check. Okay, how about you've defined the relationship, but still early? Three to six months. Yeah. You know, getting into the groove of a relationship. I think at this stage, you should just put it out in the open and talk about it. What does it mean to you? Or, you know, what I kind of did, I mean, it was a little more than three to six months when we hit Valentine's Day. But even that, I would rather kind of just do an activity together. Yes. And it was something I knew we both wanted to do. So I think I was actually the one that posed it of like, oh, actually, it's like pretty inexpensive this weekend. Like, well, let's just make this our Valentine's Day thing. My partner and I do that all the time. Like, I think it also goes back to like, are you big gift people? Or are you more about Mm -hmm. sharing experience? experiences together for each other's birthday we do a dinner like we don't actually do gifts like we both prefer that Mm -hmm. so i think having some activity that you two can plan together maybe it's something you've had on your bucket list or you just think it'd be really cool to do it and this is kind of an excuse to do it i think that alleviates pressure because you both know what you're doing you're not waiting to see what happens on the day and then anything extra is just gravy at that point gifting is definitely not our love language I get that maybe some people think gifting is very important. However, I do think in early relationships, it's more important to create memories. Yeah. And creating those memories comes from these activities that you're talking about and looking back and saying, remember when we first started dating and we did that one thing? Wasn't that so fun? I much rather think about that than like, remember those socks you got me? I don't know. I don't know what people give. I'm such not a gift person, so I don't even know what people give these days. But creating those memories and think about even if it's giving a gift, think about what memory that gift can create. Funny story though is I actually did get my partner socks when he got his job. <laughs> and I had them say, okay, this is like really dirty, but he's an engineer and his programming language of choice is Scala. So I had the socks, oh. like I got them on Etsy that said like talk Scala to me, like instead of like talk dirty to me. Wow. And he loved those. They're not the most comfortable socks, but the sentiment of that. But that was more like, you know, a quirky joke. It wasn't just like, here's a pair of socks. Wow. <laughs> Wow, you heard it here first, folks. Speak Scala to me. <laughs> oh, the way to an engineer's heart. Uh, yes. Okay, I have to remember that one. <laughs> that's very sweet, though. It's fine tuning, though, for the person. I think that's the message of it. For sure. Yes, definitely. Okay, so that's three to six months. What about over a year of dating? I think maybe it's even just like, anti-upping the experience a bit, Mm -hmm. right? Like in the three to six months, maybe it's something like you do a day trip or you do something like a nice dinner together. Maybe this time it's a vacation away for a couple days. Like I think it can Mm -hmm. progress with the time. I did have one boyfriend that cooked a really nice meal. That's nice. That's nice. And I thought that was really sweet because he did not cook. So he looked up <laughs> the recipes. He learned how to cook that day, you know, wow, and it yeah. was actually pretty good. It was pretty delicious. So I appreciate it. It's the effort. It's the effort that counts. But I agree. It's like something you want something a little bit more involved, more invested, however that shapes out for you. 
But I do like the idea of also doing like a trip or something. For me, it's more about like spending time together and doing the acts of just quality time. I'd be totally cool with that. And then the next weekend we go out for dinner. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. When it's not like crazy pre Take a rain check. You know, ridiculousness. Or you do happy hour somewhere, you know, no dinner and watch all the <laughs> cheesy things happen. <laughs> And then you go home and have a home cooked meal and talk about what you saw. When you're out <laughs> oh, that there. could work. That could, that work. could be kind of fun. Yeah, happy hour could be great, actually. Okay, I want to add one thing that I did uh-huh. that I think is good is their expectation is always that the in hetero relationships that the man will get women flowers. Oh, right. We talked. So yeah. my partner last year did get me an orchid. He always gets me an orchid. But I also got him a bouquet of flowers because he loves flowers. I love that. So I think it's nice to like, I think like people have different opinions on gendered roles and all that. But like my personal take is like, it's a celebration of love for everyone. I don't need my partner to be like doting on me on this day. Like I just want to be with my partner enjoying myself and feeling loved. I do have this fantasy that my partner would get my mom flowers on Valentine's Day. Oh, that's nice. I think nice. that would be very That's sweet. really nice. Right? My partner did that for my mom on Mother's Day. She was visiting. That's very sweet. That was good. Yes. Yeah, that's very sweet. That means a lot more to me than him getting me flowers. Putting it out there. <laughs> Let's hold that thought for a quick message. This episode is brought to you by the One Love Foundation. The numbers of people affected by relationship abuse are startling. Abusive relationships rarely start with physical abuse. Instead, there are often red flags like manipulation, isolation, belittling, and volatility. Do you know the signs? One Love Foundation, a national nonprofit dedicated to ending relationship abuse, empowers you to see the signs of an unhealthy relationship before things go too far. Visit joinonelove.org and learn to spot the signs of unhealthy and healthy relationship behaviors. This episode is made possible by Blissey. Now, who knew that a better pillowcase is all you need for better sleep? And this year, you can achieve better sleep with Blissey's award-winning 100% mulberry silk pillowcases. Seriously, silk is what's best for your hair and skin. It reduces frizz, tangles, and prevents breakage. Blissey's pillowcases regulate temperature, keeping you cool at night. And the mulberry silk is naturally hypoallergenic, so no more itching or rashes. Unlike other silk pillowcases, these are of the highest quality silk and are machine washable and durable. From night one, I was already seeing the difference. My hair was so smooth when I woke up. I just rolled out of bed and looked presentable. I seriously woke up like this. Everybody who has tried Blissey loves them. They have a ton of different prints and colors and they make great gifts because there's an option for literally anyone. Try now risk-free for 60 nights at blissey.com slash datable and get an additional 30% off. That's B-L-I-S-S-Y dot com slash D-A-T-E-A-B-L-E and use the code datable to get an additional 30% off. Your skin and hair will thank you. Do you still get gifts for your mom on Valentine's Day? Because my mom always sends me a gift. What? Does she really? That's so sweet. <laughs> it was funny. What did she send you? Well, because I was in Starbucks and I saw like they had like the Valentine's Day gift cards. And I'm like, that's so lame. Who would send that? I'm like, wait, that's what I get for my mom every year. <laughs> that's so sweet. I love that. And it's so great because, you know, I'm a Starbucks fiend too. So it's really nice. Yes. I think like, yeah, yeah. like if it's like your significant other, it might be kind of lame to give them a Starbucks gift card, but it's perfect for all these people like we even talked about in the Facebook group getting your girlfriends that like there's a time and a place for those Starbucks gift cards for sure listen that Starbucks gift card means so much to Julie if you don't know (laughs) Julie she drinks (laughs) Starbucks every day right not anymore because it's kind of far for me I mean it's not like far but it's a little (laughs) further walk so so and my partner got me a cold brew maker see you gotta get the personalized gifts (laughs) I do love it though I do have iced coffee every day see it's all about tailor it to the person exactly because that can mean nothing to someone and mean the world to you yeah i love that cold brew baker that thing was such a great gift pretty cool that's pretty dope okay another tangent thought i just had we (laughs) talked about galentine's day what do guys do we love to hear from you all what do you guys do like 
Skylantine's Day. I feel like guys, the guys do get not together. give a shit. Okay, I'm generalizing. Maybe there's some guy out there that just loves Valentine's Day. But I would go on a gamble that most don't give a shit about it. Like if they're single, they're not like depressed about it. Unless, sure. I don't know, someone proved me wrong. Maybe there's some sure. guys out there that feel differently. But listen, here's a tip for you all <laughs> single men out there. If you go out with your guy friends on Valentine's Day, you're going to meet a lot of single women who are open to meeting you. Do you remember there was a group of guys in SF and they would do these like tuxedo nights? They all wear a tuxedo and they like go out to the bars. I thought that was such such a fantastic idea. You could do that with your guy friends and make a night out of it. You could clean up. Ashley, this is a great (laughs) idea for any guy that's like, I can't get a match on a date again. Just go out on Valentine's Day. Go out on Valentine's Day. There are two days you should go out on valentine's day and rainy days yeah those are the hot perfect tip days. right there <laughs> yeah i was like seek the opportunity i was like try to see if i could look at our poll of like the breakdown of men and women that said like i love valentine's day but there's no way there's no way <laughs> it'd be no so way. hard <laughs> i know i think the general sentiment is men don't really celebrate with their guy friends but i would love it if you all started doing it make it I a think trend it's a good idea valentine's i mean someone's day. out right like when people there are people out at bars on valentine's day it's definitely a thing. It's definitely a thing. They're like singles nights. I feel like before it got kind of like this depressed, like I think this is where I struggled. It was hard for me to lose the connotation of like, oh, you're like this poor single person going out. But that actually is not what it is at all. It's people that are just like, no. fuck yeah, we're having a great time. But like, I couldn't change that mentality. So therefore, I missed out. And I recognize that yes. now. How do you take back the holiday and make it your that's own? That's what it that's, is. I think people took it, it back. So okay, very five quickly, years yeah, and above. Five, yeah. <laughs> five and above. Let's do like three and above because I feel like that's five is like same, <laughs> kind of reaching. same sentiment. You know, like I feel like once you get past two, you don't care is my take. You're living together now. Yeah. You've met the parents. Like, yeah, basically, it's like not a novel thing anymore. Yeah. Yeah. What do you do? Whatever year that is for you. <laughs> yeah. What are you going to do? Maybe you just go back to like sending a text. <laughs> <laughs> Just acknowledge it. Hey, honey. You're like in another, the other room. You're like, happy Valentine's Day. Thinking of you. Well, I just remember. So, oh my God, I remember I was supposed to go out with my ex the night before Valentine's Day. That was supposed to be our first date. Oh. And then he canceled last minute. And he canceled last minute. But he did like say like, I want to reschedule. Later on, I found out that he was like helping his family like wine event that's every year on that day. Oh, right, right. So like, but I didn't know. I didn't know any context, right? And then of course, the next day I see on Facebook that his friend checked him and her in. You remember when Facebook check-ins used to be a big thing? Yeah. To the wine event and it said like, happy Valentine's Day. And I was just like, yeah. Oh, what the fuck? Kind of, you know? Yeah. I mean, like I clearly was missing a lot of context, but that's what social media can do for you. Context is hard. Anyways, I was with my friend, one of our mutual friends and her husband. We were hanging out and I was like, oh, should I like leave you guys to like, they'd been together for, I don't know, 10 years at this point, like a long time. They met in college. And I was like, you know, I can like leave you guys to like do Valentine's Day. They're like, we don't give a shit about Valentine's Day. (laughs) They're like, please stay. Like, this is not an important thing to us in the slightest. Yeah, please save us. I'm like, I don't want to impose. I don't want to ruin your Valentine's Day. They're like, like actually, we don't care. The, my gift to her is a threesome. So you are the gift. <laughs> that Julie. did not happen. But <laughs> <laughs> Drop your pants, everyone. Um, <laughs> this actually reminds me of a story. I don't think I've ever told you this, or maybe I have, but I'll tell you who it is and it'll make sense later. Oh, God. Uh, when okay. we're off air. I love when we do that. We tell a story and then later on, <laughs> you're like, like it's this person. About? I'm like, what? <laughs> I was single at the time. A girlfriend of mine had been in a relationship for at least two years at that point. And she lived in a different city where I would have to fly to her. But anyway, she called me and she's like, do you want to spend Valentine's Day with me? And I was a little perplexed. You have a partner. Aren't you going to yeah. spend it with him? And she said, oh, he's he has to work and he just won't have the time. So I'm like, sure, whatever. I'll fly to you and we'll have Valentine's Day together. I get there and her fucking partner surprises her. Oh, my God. 
and shows up at her door because what had been happening was they were fighting. <gasps> yes. He was trying to make it up oh to her. Oh, my God. This is so awkward. I didn't know that they'd been fighting. She was using me as rebound. So here I am. because I, I think I know what trend in. this is, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's the same one in all of them. It's, she's the same character in all those stories. Oh, my God. So I'm like, okay. I, <laughs> this I, is so I, awkward. I'm not flying out till two days later. What am I going to do? And it was the night of Valentine's Day. I flew in. He surprises her at her door. So we had dinner plans. So awkward. She had to call <gasps> the restaurant and say, can we add can one three? more person? <laughs> And then the are you the one us. out or is he the one out? Like, I don't even know who the third wheel is right now. <laughs> who's who's getting voted off this island? The three of us show up to a fucking Valentine's Day <gasps> dinner where everyone's coupled off. They're like snuggling. <gasps> it was like a Moroccan themed restaurant. So you're on the floor and <gasps> you're like under blankets and stuff. It was like a kind of a romantic, but also kind of sexual vibe. Oh and the three God. of us are sitting there and everyone's staring at us like, you guys should just what is this pizza situation? And called it a day. <laughs> <laughs> it was the most fucking awkward thing. And I was like, don't you ever, don't do that to your friends. Don't do that. No, to like, don't that is use terrible. me as a rebound. That is terrible. It was awful. Wow. And think about her boyfriend who had driven, I don't know, six oh hours my God. to surprise her and to make things terrible. up to her only to find me there with her. Look, with all we've said today, <laughs> you got to do what works for you. But maybe there's one thing you shouldn't do, and it's what you just said. Don't do that. That's don't our only don't friend. do friend. Yeah, like do whatever you want. Celebrate whatever way you want. These are just ideas. You take what serves you. Leave what doesn't. If you want to get a big freaking gift or if you want socks, like go for it. You know, <laughs> just don't put yeah. your friend through this. That's all we're asking you. And if you are single, I think this is the day to really pamper yourself. You make the call. You either say, fuck it. Looking back, I'm like, maybe I needed that time that I could just like bask in my own misery a little, right? Like mm -hmm. if you need that go for it yep. if you want to hang out with friends if you want to do galentine's day if you want to do bro day like what are we bro, bro in time day Guy day, bro day. Bro bro day. day. <laughs> whatever it is you should do it you know knock yourself out i think at the end of the day how do you show yourself love how do you show the people you love whether you're single or not you have people that love you and that you love so don't forget that i'm gonna declare February 15th, bro day. <laughs> <laughs> Just full bro day. <laughs> bro out. I like it. We're creating new holidays <laughs> on this podcast. This is why you're here every uh, week. So fun conversation. We love yes. to hear from you. How are you celebrating or not celebrating Valentine's Day? Are you doing Valentine's Day or Galentine's Day or bro day <laughs> or no day at all? Day. <laughs> <laughs> reach out to us tell us what you're doing tag us on social media go on instagram and our tag is at dateable podcast or you can hashtag stay dateable we'll find those too or send us an email hello at datablepodcast.com we love yep. to hear from you and remember to go to datablepodcast.com and sign up for our newsletter we are yes. a couple weeks at this point you know we're a little over a month yeah. but this is really new and the idea is that we can help each other through modern dating so join the newsletter. We've already been getting really good feedback on it and people writing in and sharing their own stuff. That always Yay. makes us really happy. And to celebrate us and celebrate you, give us a rating and review in yes, Apple Podcasts. Yes, that's all we want for Valentine's Day. All we want Five for stars, Valentine's Day. Five uh, stars, handwritten review, <laughs> translated into text. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> Send us a love letter, a love note. That's all we want on Valentine's Day. Thank you. So simple. And we will see you next week for another episode of Dateable. We're going to wrap up this episode. Stay Dateable. The Dateable Podcast is part of the Frolic Podcast Network. Find more podcasts you'll love at frolic.media slash podcasts. Want to continue the conversation? First, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter with the handle at Dateable Podcast. Tag us in any post with the hashtag stay dateable and trust us, we look at all of those posts. 
Then head over to our website, datablepodcast.com. There you'll find all the episodes as well as articles, videos, and our coaching service with vetted industry experts. You can also find our premium Y series where we dissect, analyze, and offer solutions to some of the most common dating conundrums. We're also downloadable for free on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Overcast, Stitcher Radio, and other podcast platforms. Your feedback is valuable to us, so don't forget to leave us a review. And most importantly, remember to stay dateable. Thank you.